All right, so this is a core conversation. Uh, planning and executing a focus sprint that actually addresses a blocking area and helps move an open source project forward. I win the award for the longest title. Uh, you can follow along with this presentation. It's reveal in a GitHub repo. Uh, and the, a link to it is bit.ly slash sprint dash planning. Uh, I'm Kathy Thays. I'm the SCT in Drupal and also on Twitter. Uh, I work at Black Mesh, and uh, I get paid to um, work on core, go to events, uh, onboard new contributors at sprints, and uh, they pay me to do that because uh, they have like 65% of their hosting business is with uh, Drupal sites. And so that's their way of giving back and strengthening uh, the Drupal project. I'm Peter Willannon, uh, Pete Willannon on Drupal.org uh, in IRC. Uh, I work for Acquia, uh, mostly doing hosting engineering currently. Uh, I do not get paid to actually contribute to Drupal, though Acquia sends me to some events uh, like this and, and some sprints, and I take vacation time uh, thanks to our unlimited vacation policy. <laughs> so I take advantage of that to uh, find time to contribute. Um, so uh, in general, this talk is going to be about uh, Drupal 8, though hopefully you will find the things we talk about are relevant to contributor projects also. I know especially contributor projects thinking about doing upgrades to Drupal 8 have been organizing sprints themselves. Uh, so keep in mind that we could be talking about core or we could talk, be talking about contrib. Um, give you a little bit of background, uh, some examples of what's been successful in the past, uh, some ideas about what should happen in the sprint, uh, and a little bit about what the DA is doing right now. Um, so those are sort of the high-level things we'll touch on. Uh, hopefully we'll get um, this that part of it done in about 30 minutes so that we have plenty of time for a conversation. This being core conversations, we would like actual feedback from people that have organized events or thinking about organizing events um, in terms of uh, what what you found successful or what you're worried about. Um, so the audience for this talk is really decision makers in organizations who might be thinking about funding a sprint, uh, local organizers. So if you're thinking about organizing a sprint or you're, you've organized other events and you want to know how organizing a sprint is different than organizing like a camp or something else. Um, if you're a contributor and you haven't participated in one of these sorts of sprints, you want to know how this might be different than let's say the sprints at the end of DrupalCon. Um, uh, and Organizers have said, if you've organized something like this before, uh, we'd appreciate your feedback. Uh, contrib maintainers uh, who want to organize a sprint around their module. Um, and finally, something we'll touch on at the end is especially project managers. So if you uh, are not actually technical in terms of writing code, but technical in terms of helping manage projects, uh, we think that your skills are currently undervalued and would be really helpful in these sorts of events. Um, so just, and then on the flip side, if you're not yet a contributor um, and just want to know what sprints are about or you're like a business sales marketing person who's not making decisions about funding events, you're welcome to stay, but this might not uh, have a lot of relevance for you, so feel free to get up and, and walk out. Um, <laughs> so the goals for this talk, um, as I said, to help people uh, planning sprints, to provoke your conversation, uh, let Kathy and I, uh, give you some of our uh, opinionated opinions about what makes sprints good, um, and hopefully you know, improve uh, the trajectory for Drupal 8 and contrib. So um, the goal, moving open source project forward. Uh, so a sprint, as you guys probably already know, is, is sort of a focused effort for, for a short period of time. Generally, the sprints we're talking about last you know, two to three days up to a week. Uh, I would say anything longer than that is not no longer really a code sprint, uh, but a job. <laughs> um, so at the end of DrupalCon, uh, there's a tradition of having a huge uh, sprint, and as time has gone on, this has focused more and more on uh, new contributors, so mentoring, getting people organized, celebrating people who are getting involved for the first time, making sure they're set up. Uh, so there are also smaller... Uh, groups doing sort of focus sprinting, but it's really only one day, uh, and often you know they don't have time to achieve sort of large goals. But they, it is a good chance for a lot of people to come together. Um, so some of the things you know that we're talking about will apply to that big DrupalCon sprint or other 
large event sprints. Um, but you know, for the most part, what we want to talk about is a focus sprint. Uh, so that's where you have a small group, uh, people, you know, the number of people basically will fit in one room, and they're there for those two, three, four, five days uh, working together uh, to try to get some things done. Uh, so, just as sort of a, a big picture, if you guys uh, probably know where we are in the beta, Drupal 8 release cycle is currently in the beta phase. So, we are trying to get down to zero criticals. That's where a lot of these focus sprints uh, have, have been organized around, is trying to knock that number down to zero, because we need to get to zero so we can get a release candidate. Um, what you might see if you look in detail in this image is that when we get to release candidate, we actually expect that there will be more criticals found. Um, and that's also one of the important things to address with these sorts of events is not only looking at critical issues, uh, but looking at things that people have rated high as bugs because oftentimes if you start digging into a highly rated bug and not critical, you'll discover it's critical. Uh, conversely, you might dig into a critical and discover really it's not so bad. Uh, it's not going to impact the release severely. We could get back to it later and you could downgrade it and stop blocking the release candidate. So addressing both of these categories of bugs is important at these sorts of sprints. Um, so, in terms of how these things work well, there's a few things that, that we want to go over that we think we can agree on. So these should be non-controversial, like you organize the event, just, you know, make sure these are sort of your checkboxes that you have uh, in your planning phase. Um, so, and then after that, we'll come back to things that we think are maybe more controversial or, or things that you wouldn't necessarily know um, as being obvious. Um, so the, the biggest and most important thing is to have a good venue uh, and sort of everything that goes with that in terms of facilities, in terms of keeping people watered and fed. So you need a dedicated space to make this kind of event ses successful. Don't try to do it in a coffee shop. Don't try to do it someplace where there's going to be, you know, distraction, people walking through. Um, you know, if necessary, that means you might have to pay for space. Um, and that is probably okay in terms of making the event a success. Uh, obviously, power strips. Um, tables and chairs, so that people need to be comfortable, they need to be able to face each other, have conversations, uh, move the chairs around as their needs change during the day. Um, beverages, you know, coffee, uh, as we heard uh, this morning at the keynote, the biggest complaint from yesterday was that the coffee service uh, got cut short, so make sure you have, as, as best as possible, you know, either provide to the sprinters or have available someplace for them to get uh, beverages. Uh, if you're serving beer or wine later in the day, uh, make sure to get some good quality non-alcoholic beverages also so that people don't feel excluded if they don't want to drink. Um, and natural light. So it's funny, I talked to someone who was like, oh, you want to sprint, you want a basement space, right? You want like a cave. I'm like, no, that is exactly not what I want when I'm sprinting. I want natural light. I want to, you know, recover from my jet lag because probably I traveled there. Um, I want to be able to get a sense of how the day is going, what the weather is. Um, you know, I want to stay awake. And that's what natural light help does, helps do for people. Um, so, you know, don't, don't pick a basement cave. Uh, you should have writing boards, whiteboards, something that people can collaboratively scribble on. Um, so the, those sort of collaborative whiteboarding moments can actually be the most uh, productive moments of the entire sprint. So make sure that you, know, you have made some facility for that. Uh, don't, don't leave that uh, as catch as catch can. Um, uh, and finally, climate control. Again, you want people to be comfortable. Um, it's nice. Uh, as with natural light, natural air can be very useful for keeping people awake. Um, if not, at least make sure that, that you have some – the space is going to be comfortable. People aren't going to be sweating or freezing. Um, if you're organizing the event, parking can be important. So people are going to come and go during the day. Don't make them, you know, walk a mile uh, if they had to, had to drive there. And the thing that obviously you know, but we'll just say it, is the Internet. If there isn't good internet for your event, um, Wi-Fi is obviously more convenient. You should have a wired backup. Uh, you should really spend time checking out the venue beforehand. Make sure that it will hold up to even you know a dozen people doing hardcore work. Um, you should talk to Freenode if you're going to have a fairly large event because they will sometimes block people if everyone connects to IRC from one IP address. Um, and you should tell the uh, Drupal uh, Association infrastructure team because if you're really uh, posting a lot of core patches, they may need to actually add more test bots. Uh, so you need to have that sort of channel lined up ahead of time so you know who to reach out to in case the test bots get backed up so people aren't sitting around all day just waiting to see if their patch passed. Uh, where did my cursor go? There we go. Um, 
food. Um, it's important if, if you can bring food into the venue, that can be good to help people, people keep working. Uh, deconstructed food, which is like, you know, assemble your own sandwich, salad, something is very, a great way to go if you can because that lets everyone meet their own needs and then you don't have to have separate lines or separate uh, things prepared ahead of time for the vegans, the vegetarians, the, I don't know, paleos, <laughs> whoever they are. Um, and it's also great if, you know, the sprint is in a location where people can go out and quickly get dinner and come back um, so they don't feel like once they've left the sprint that they're done for the day. Um, so that's kind of the things we hope we could all agree on. Um, in terms of this is the take-home that Kathy's going to uh, expound upon. Right. So um, the, a, a lot of the people who are at sprints are there on their own time, and uh, we want to respect them as uh, people and what they're offering and uh, what they've had to go through to get there. And so it really matters uh, that things are convenient and high quality. Uh, it helps to uh, do some super fun things uh, at events and between events to keep people uh, communicating and working really well together. Uh, so um, having colorful pictures helps organize things and also uh, is fun. Um, we have all different kinds of ways of identifying people at sprints. Uh, sometimes we use t-shirts, uh, bunny ears, lays. Um, uh, people travel from far away, and we have a tradition of uh, bringing chocolates from your home country and then sharing them with the other people at the Sprint. Uh, and it's really nice because um, it like reinforces the differences that we have, but when we come together, it's, it's nice and fun. Uh, we don't work all day. So uh, integrating something from the local area into the day is nice and provides a good break. Um, we mentioned uh, like being able to go out for dinner and come back, um, breaking for lunch and having some really good food. Uh, the conversations that we have when we're not tied to our computer screens can be really brilliant things. Uh, so we want to facilitate that. All right, so um, like I'm Kathy and this is Peter, but like who the heck are we to talk about sprint planning? Um, we go to a lot of sprints and we plan a lot of sprints. Um, so a lot of these things uh, that we're gonna recommend have been things that have worked for us in recent sprints. Uh, Dev Days, uh, the New Jersey uh, Sprint, DrupalCons, uh, so, we know what we're doing here. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, things that you just may not know. You're just like, oh, I didn't know that you did that when you were planning a sprint, but that really makes sense. I'm going to do that too. Okay, so how the heck do sprints come about, right? Is it just a calendar thing on a meetup and then people show up? No. Uh, so somebody has to have the idea to have a sprint, and the triggers are usually that someone has like this overwhelming, burning desire to get a particular thing done. Like it's bothering them. They're thinking of it all the time and they're like, we really need to address this. Uh, maintainers or release managers will be aware of gaps in the current uh, work that's being done. And they'll be like, oh, you know, we're doing really good on these issues, but nobody's looking at these. Um, the topic could be something that you want to use getting together in the same physical space to do. So it might be some kind of problem that's really vaguely defined or super scary uh, and is not moving forward organically on its own. Uh, another trigger for holding a sprint can be that funding is available, either through uh, local companies, uh, getting some sponsors, um, or through like D8 Accelerate. Then the sprint will often use that for uh, plane tickets to bring people in, uh, having people have a hotel room, and paying for food at the Sprint. The more planning we do, the better the event is going to come off. 
So one thing is um, right before the sprint is uh, identify a topic area. Get, it's not just like, hey, let's work on Drupal 8. That's not good enough. Uh, so get a specific area and then identify specific goals within that area. Doing work ahead of time, weeks ahead of time, within that special focus, looking at the issues and triaging them, making sure their uh, issue summaries are up to date, um, relating them together, providing context, is gonna make the sprint much more effective when people arrived to work there. One of the things uh, to do during this is to um, identify which issues are blocking which other issues. It helps during the planning to have contact with a committer to your project. Uh, you can get advanced buy-in from a committer like, hey, we were thinking of having a sprint. Do you think that's a good idea? Uh, they can provide a lot of like overview guidance to make sure you're going in the right direction. The other thing you can do when you talk to the uh, committer during the planning process is you can ask them if they are available to attend and what days, and or if they might be available to uh, attend remotely. Uh, because when you're working really fast and you have all these people going together and you have issues that are blocking other issues, having a responsive committers is like amazing. Uh, we're really lucky in um, Drupal 8 because we have committers that are just kind of always responsive. Our RTBCQ is under control most of the time, mostly due to Alex. Um, but all the committers are like paying attention to that. Uh, but it can make even more difference when you have a focused sprint to just touch base with them and let them know it's happening uh, in advance. So uh, three week out timeline for this advanced planning, uh, defining focus, identifying and inviting attendees, uh, doing some uh, hangouts with the technical lead and maybe a maintainer or somebody else who's like project managing the sprint to make sure things are going well. Uh, one week out, do another check-in, um, have some initial debates about the issues, like is this really blocking this? What is this really about? I don't understand this thing. And getting that done ahead of time before you have all these people arrive. Um, you want to have one or two uh, domain experts. If they, can, um, if they can work a few days in advance, especially on like maybe there's one blocking issue that will unblock all these other things, that can really help out a sprint. Uh, doing this uh, planning takes time. So the organizer is gonna be doing all this volunteering or uh, logistical planning. Uh, so like uh, it could be like, uh, four people and like getting together and talking for like nine hours. That's a lot of hours. Uh, and maybe doing some of that initial work on the blocking issues could be like another four people, like working 10 hours on some issues in advance of the sprint. Um, so um, during this time, you can work on your funding, uh, you, uh, check on grant applications, um, Maybe if it's in correlation with a camp, you might be using some of the camp money. Um, get uh, logistics arranged for the people who are gonna fly in, pay for those things, find hotels, airplane tickets. All right, so at the actual sprint, these things really help the sprint be effective. Uh, keep track of the issues that are within the scope of the project and their status in a way where everybody can see it. So like boards on the wall work really well for that. Keep track of which is blocking which, who is working on them, uh, and it, you can have more than one person working on the same issue, uh, and what still remains on the issue that needs to be done. Any work that gets done in that room still also needs to be posted back up on the issue. This is good for documenting things uh, so we can see how the issue evolves over the days, but really good at communicating with people who are remote. Uh, because even though you might be having your sprint locally, 
Um, there are people all over the world paying attention to these issues, and we don't want to keep the information that we have in the room secret from them. We want to have good communication from them. This is really beneficial because like, when we go to sleep, the other part of the world wakes up, and they can work on things, and then when we wake up, we've got more progress. And that can't happen if we don't post updates in public on the issues. Uh, good times to do that are like right before you break for a meal. So right before lunch, like upload your broken things and make a comment being like, I wasn't sure about this and maybe this, da 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 da, coming back to this later. Right before dinner, like whenever you're just stopping work for a while. Uh, your future self will thank you because you will have forgotten what you were thinking then. So it's good for communicating with the world and also yourself. So even with a small sprint, there's going to be a lot of different things happening. And so we want to be communicating really well throughout the day and checking in with uh, the different people, working on different issues, uh, asking them, like, what's blocking them, what do they need, and then trying to get them their help. Sometimes people who are working get a little heads down and try and like solve things themselves, whereas a little bit of help from outside can help uh, speed up what they're doing. Uh, we also want to check on the test spots and make sure that the tests are running okay. And we want to take pictures. Uh, documenting the sprint is great because usually sprints are uh, energizing, fun, productive, and the people who are there, they want to look back on that and be like, yeah, that was awesome when we did that, and remember when we did that, that was so great. So it's good for that, and it's also good for communicating with other people outside, uh, because somebody could be like listening to the chatter about the sprint, um, and when they see pictures of it, they know what it's like. That makes them less afraid to attend one in the future. So you're not taking pictures to get people to come to your current event. You're taking pictures so that you might get people coming to your next one. All right, at the end of each day, it is super duper helpful to have one person just write like a summary. This is all the stuff we got done. These things uh, still need to be done. We're really unsure about this and just post it up there. Um, this makes a final report at the end of the sprint much easier to compile. Uh, it keeps attendees up to speed, so if I'm working on one thing, I don't know what these six other people are doing, I can, even though I'm at the event, read the summary of the day and be like, oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, and when we write things down like that, it allows us to celebrate the successes that we've had. Because what we tend to be focusing on is what is broken and what we need to do next. And it's really good for humans to be like, yeah, look at all that we got done. after the event. Uh, we want to communicate what happened. This is sometimes required depending upon your funding that you got. So it might be required by a grant or if a company gave you money, they may have done it in exchange for you writing a blog about the event and putting it up on their uh, website. Write-ups like these uh, enrich the community knowledge and help transfer that to future sprints. So this is really good investment. After the sprint, there's still more work to be done. And uh, there's, uh, the work after the sprint uh, can be really effective and a significant part uh, of what happens. Um, so you want to check on issues uh, that got really close but aren't yet committed and see what's blocking them and just nudge them along and like finish that off because you invested so much work at the sprint, you want it to pay off. <laughs> uh, so you've probably heard about this program a few times uh, at, at the conference already. Uh, it, it's a great example of, of how the Drupal Association is trying to push Drupal 8 forward. I don't know if people are around during Drupal 7, but the sort of last uh, few months of development before release candidate are, are the hardest because the, the problems are no longer fun. Um, the problems are just difficult. <laughs> so um, it's you know, you need the this sort of impetus and, and ability to, to hold these sprints, I, I think is going to get Drupal 8 done uh, much faster than it would otherwise. As we said, so these sort of events are 
to push forward those issues that are not getting solved organically. Um, so there's a link here uh, if you want to donate and haven't. But also, if you're thinking about organizing one of these sprints, uh, you should definitely apply for a grant. Uh, the New Jersey sprint that Kathy mentioned was a really – we applied almost as soon as the program uh, was open. So we got, like, one of the first grants, and that was sort of exciting – uh, also, you know, gave us avenues directly to people like Angie, who then got involved and helped us move all those issues forward on a daily basis. Yeah, so the link for that is crowdrise.com slash d8accelerate. Um, okay, so I think nothing we've said so far probably is too controversial. Uh, so this last section was the things that we thought you might not know, uh, but we found to be are really important, and then we wanted to put together a few things that we thought might be a little more provocative. Uh, hopefully you will have opinions and agree or disagree, and we can have some discussion about that. Um, so uh, one of the things that I think is maybe a little controversial is that you really need to focus on getting specific people to your sprint. Uh, so even before you pick a date, you need to be reaching out to the sprinters, and you need to adjust the dates of the event to the sprinters if possible. Um, Make a list of people you must have at the event. Uh, make that you know, sort of the entire event conditional on those people rather than defining an event and then hoping that they will show up. Um, if you get some of those people to confirm, they will also trigger additional participants to come. Um, so, uh, and you know, once you've gotten some of those people to confirm, publish their names. Make sure that they are okay with you saying, this person is committed to come on these days it's going to be really exciting because you'll get to work with, you know, Daniel Weiner or Tim Plunkett or Kathy, you know, someone who's, who's an exciting person to be in the room with because they get a lot done. Um, so, again, uh, the people are, are the key, those key people, and not the date when you're organizing the event. Um, again, we've mentioned this several times, but I think, uh, so, you know, I, I want to hear if people agree or disagree with, the fact that having this strong communication with the committer uh, is essential for the event to be successful. Uh, so the, you should, with a contrib project, you can reach out directly to the contrib uh, maintainer. For core, you need to get in touch with uh, one of the core committers or ideally a couple of them since they may have gaps in their coverage. Um, if at all possible, get them to attend. So going to things like dev days are great because you usually get a couple, two or three committers in the room. and. You know, it's amazing how fast things get done when you're sitting next to the committee and you're like, that's ready to go, it's blocking this thing, and they just commit it to core. Uh, you can move on to the next issue. You don't have to wait uh, for them to notice that it's in the RTBCQ. They just commit it? Well, after reviewing it, <laughs> they, they just commit it when it's ready to be committed. But it's not like you have to wait a day for them to review the queue. <laughs> just check in. Thanks for the clarification, Kevin. Yes, nothing just goes in. Maybe a one-line <laughs> typo. <laughs> um, and, you know, a, a flip side of that is that you should be recruiting for your sprint people that have relationships already with the committers, either the contrib project lead, ideally get the contrib project lead to your sprint or get someone they've worked with before or get someone who has a good relationship with one or more of the core committers, you know, who has their direct personal email address, you know, their cell phone number, whatever it takes – uh, again, so you have this open communication channel, uh, and you're not blocked uh, waiting for issues uh, to go in when they're ready. Um, so again, keep hammering on this. You need to ask particular people. Uh, the flip side of this, which might be a little controversial, is that you need to be prepared to say no to some people. So if you're holding a focus rent, and you have someone who says, you know what, I, I've heard about this Drupal thing. I want to come and get my machine set up and really help, you, you know, you should be prepared, and, you know, we've done this at a couple events recently, and just say, you know what, That's, this is not the event for you. I appreciate that you're interested. Here's another event where you can do that, where you can get set up and get started. Uh, but this is going to be a focused event, and we basically need everyone to come in already up to speed working on core. They don't have to be subject area experts. In fact, sometimes it's great to have some people who are sort of generalists there who are, are going to work on issues as needed, are going to work on the issue summaries, are going to understand how the whole process works. Uh, see, the whole sprint doesn't have to be the key people, uh, but everyone at the sprint should really be up to speed on, on day one walking in the door, and that's going to mean you don't uh, get distracted trying to help people you know, debug uh, their local LAMP stack. Um, so just as an example, at, at the New Jersey sprint, I would say two or three of the people were sort of more generalists, 
out of about 10. And that was a, that was a good mix because uh, those people could pick up the, sort of a lot of the smaller issues, uh, could move patches forward, uh, could fix uh, things that were sort of obviously in need of fixing um, without having to have a huge uh, deep background, whereas the people with a deep background kind of get the, the basic fix in place uh, and then kind of move between issues, uh, moving them forward uh, as some of the other people have jumped in and, and uh, dealt with uh, the smaller things, dealt with writing tests. Uh, you know, the writing test is often the most important thing of getting a patch right. Um, so, but you don't necessarily have to be the deep subject area to understand, subject matter expert to understand, you know, what's supposed to happen and how to write a test to test it. Um, again, focus means not mixing and mentoring. As I said in the last slide, if people are going to come in the door and need to be mentored, you should probably divert them to a different event. Uh, and finally, uh, and maybe this is sort of the big, a big take-home message, is that in order to make one of these events successful, you're targeting these key participants, and they need to trust you as the event organizer that their time is not going to be wasted. Um, so, you know, it might feel like it's, we're talking about a lot of time invested up front to get this event right. You know, Kathy was saying, you know, at least four people, you know, probably, you know, nine hours over the few each or more the few weeks beforehand, plus, you know, hours working on the issues before the sprint happens. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, but that's really essential. So the people showing up feel like they're going to have a very productive uh, time at the sprint because all the ground lake work has been laid for them. So just be aware if you're organizing one of these sprints, it's not that just the logistics, uh, but really all this pre-planning, issue triaging, communication ahead of time, laying the groundwork for success that we can celebrate at the end of the sprint uh, is what's going to make it successful. Um, so, and then coming back to something we said at the beginning is about project management. And so I think this is an area where uh, I've at least felt real gaps at some of the most recent sprints in the sense that we didn't uh, have someone whose sole role it was to be the project manager. We ended up basically uh, dumping this role on someone who was also a subject expert or a committer. And so th that person spent a lot of their time managing the sprint, uh, managing the issues, keeping track of things, uh, writing summaries, which was really great, but it meant that one person was basically double burdened and get kind of burned out by the end of the sprint. So I think that an area where we uh, could really use help uh, if is from uh, project managers or people with that kind of skill set who might not uh, be interested in writing patches but are willing to show up to sprints and help uh, keep the technical uh, issues on track. Um, so, you know, and I'm not sure if we can get volunteers to do that. And this is, again, sort of a controversial issue that I'd like to have people's opinions on. Do we need to pay project managers for our sprints? Um, you know, what would the cost of that be? You know, if we're paying them $100 an hour for eight hours times however many days of the sprint, uh, is that a worthwhile investment out of, let's say, your grant money to get someone to do that uh, as a paid project manager? Um, or are there people who have those skills that we'd be willing to show up that just don't know that they're needed. Um, so that's, you know, maybe it's also something the DA should be looking at. Should the DA have a, a sort of a stable or a set of, uh, you know, professional staff that do this sort of logistical, uh, technical logistical project management? Should they be, you know, flying around the country going to different sprints, you know, on the DA's budget? Um, again, these are things we want your feedback on, uh, discussion. You know, should we have uh, really logistical uh, experts as, as part of the DA? Um, so finally, and I think Kathy's mentioned this several times, uh, you know, the human element in all these Drupal events, the Drupal community is really essential. Uh, you have a lot of volunteers giving their time, so don't make them bitter, burned out, and sad. <laughs> um, so, you know, don't ask people to, also, to volunteer and also pay for the event. Don't be afraid to go out looking for sponsors, asking for money. Um, and, you know, allow people uh, basically to have their own lives. If they need to show up at 10 a.m. and leave at 5, despite the fact that the rest of you are working all evening, that's okay. Like, let them have their family life. Let them do what they need to do. Uh, don't, you know, sort of step back and just recognize that any contribution you get is valuable um, and, and should be appreciated. Um, finally, and Kathy mentioned, you know, that basically there's follow-up at the end of the sprint, and that follow-up can actually be, I think, uh, the thing that's more important than what actually happens in the room. 
So a lot of times being in the room together with that group of people allows you to form a consensus, and that consensus and that plan can form the basis of work that goes on for literally months afterwards. Um, so, uh, you know, the other thing to think about is that, you know, again, you want to motivate people, make them feel good about what happened at the sprint. So they do uh, basically continue to volunteer their time, their own free time, um, after the sprint to keep moving the issues forward that got started at the sprint but maybe not finished. Um, and I, just a, as an example, uh, in I went to Dev Days in Hungary, and, and we basically sat down with Daniel Weiner, and he and I came up with a plan uh, that we were going to rewrite an entire core subsystem. <laughs> Was that plan number one or th two or three? I don't remember. <laughs> we had several plans. We but did. <laughs> but we, had, we came up with a plan, and basically it took us, uh, I would say, until... So that was like March, and we finished those issues in like July. So we, you know, we basically had the first ideas. We came to consensus, and then we, you know, it took us that long to actually execute the plan. But without being together in the same room at that sprint, we would yeah. never had formulated the plan, never be able to con come to consensus. Um, and you know, that basically formed the work of you know the next six, six months of work. Uh, so I think we're we still have at least fifteen minutes. Right. Um, so I yeah. So we have we're supposed to be done at eleven forty-five. Uh, we got started a little late, so I don't know. We could maybe eke out another extra five minutes. We've got plenty of time. So um, to add your comment or question, please come to the microphone so that we can capture it for the recording. Um, uh, Aline is taking notes up here, so we can record any like good things that we want to remember for later. Um, yeah, so it's it's okay. Formulate your thoughts. We'll wait. <laughs> oh, if you could if you could start by saying your your name and your Drupal name, that would really help me. How's the sound level? Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm John Weixner from the Western New York uh, Drupal User Group, and I'm JPW eleven sixteen. And I can't thank you enough for emphasizing putting on top of the heap internet as, as one of the criteria among your utilities. Um, speaking from experience, I had a uh, facilities manager who was very you know, friendly and accommodating at first say, yes, we have internet, no problem, mm. which meant tethering off of her cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. so that brings up the point. And, oh, and by the way, she also would not allow... Um, extension cords because it was an historic structure and they didn't want any tape on their wooden floors. So my point being, uh, if you get all that information ahead of time, is there a specific number um, for bandwidth? Yes. And so also, you don't know how many attendees you will have. And usually, a person is so myopic, they don't know what Drupal is. They just need to know how big a pipe. Right. So um, some of the things like we we said in the beginning some of the things about a focus sprint are similar to some of the more like giant sprints that we do uh, so we have a, a page for sprint planners where we document some of this some of these things and it's on drupal.org it's slash core dash mentoring slash sprint dash resources you can just google core mentoring and then go, there's a, it's a child page at the bottom and one of the nice thing that's on here is what is the internet that you need? Uh, so you should plan on uh, enough access points that have enough capacity for two and a half devices per person. Uh, you want the bandwidth limits per device should be no more, uh, no less than 100 megabits um, per person. What is that wrong? No, I, yes, it's, I'm. I'm not good at reading numbers. It's ten. There's only one zero there. Um, I have. I have other excellent skills. Um, uh, for a sprint of about a hundred people, you want sixty to eighty megabits down and twenty megabits up, and that'll handle three hundred to four hundred devices. So, depending upon the size, uh, you can you can scale that for what you need. But all this is written down on the stock um, and. Uh, it this has come at the the reason this is here is because over the years that summary doc that people wrote up after events started to include 
it, what they used. So we had this stuff, this is how it went. And then another event would write up their summary of their sprint. We had this stuff, this is how it went. And so we were able to take that information and make a canonical source that then people can find. So this is another reason why the documenting your sprint is really important. Thank you. And can I ask a quick follow-up then? Sure. Um, when you said focus means not mixing in mentoring, and if the attendees need help, mm. find another event, can you address something called a learning sprint? Because if you want to bring the next generation of sprint participants on, maybe right. that would be something. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I think one of your topics can, like if you're going to have a focused sprint, your focus could be, uh, onboarding new contributors, and we have those. So I run uh, I run a monthly sprint uh, locally uh, that does that. Um, I also help organize um, sprints at DrupalCons that do that. So on Friday we'll have between 200 and 300 people who've never contributed to Core before, and that's what we'll be doing. We'll be onboarding them. Uh, but what that does is that ensures that your open source project is um, healthy far into the future. And what we were talking about today is um, what we need to get done in the next two months. So those events are really important, but they're, they're slightly different and they require some different planning and logistics. Um, but what does work pretty well, um, like we mentioned, was to have experts, like a majority of experts, and to have just a couple people who kind of know what they're doing but not really. Uh, and so that's like a little bit of both then. Uh, it's, it's organic mentoring. It's not formal mentoring. There's no like, go here and watch this presentation and we will teach you things, right? It's like, no, sit down at this table and do whatever we tell you and ask us questions and we will help you help us. And that's informal mentoring and that happens in the Drupal community all the time. We don't, like, because it's ingrained in our culture. That's how we work when we sit down together. Uh, my name is Levi Sigworth, uh, Drupal.org user Wheatpenny. And my question for you is um, if you could expand further on the project management needs that you have, um, specifically around what actions a project manager would be doing uh, to help facilitate the work that is happening. So I don't really know what a project manager does. Um, but I asked a project manager once. I asked Shannon Ventus, um, who I greatly respect. And she told me that... Um, one of the ways she described it was project managers uh, communicate with others to find out what is blocking them, and then they help that person get whatever they need. Um, so, yeah. So I would just, yeah, I would say examples from the last couple sprints, um, uh, you know, just tracking the status of issues. Who's working on what issue? What issues are, you know, where in progress? Which ones are blocked? Uh, those daily summaries, getting, making sure people are posting their issue updates. Um, so, like for New Jersey, we had, we ended up having Angie basically write the daily summary, which was like really helpful. But it's like, wait, she's a core committer and she's like basically helping us manage a project. Um, you know, like at uh, in Montpellier, we had Wim Lears basically running around putting post up, post-it notes up, you know, tracking the status of issues, which was great, but it meant that he couldn't do actu any actually coding for like three days. He was just right. tracking things, and so it, and was, it, was, it really, was... it was too much to ask him yeah, to it do. Too much. It's not like Wim can't do that, right? It's just like we were asking him to do like three things. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, I, you know, and then, you know, just behind you had those amazing, you know, boards in uh, Dev Days in Hungary, you know, tracking all the issues, but again, it's like that meant that her time wasn't spent on code, it was spent on, you know, moving, moving you know, the, the actual sprint board kind of uh, stickies from one place to, to the next. Um, so that's really a full-time job if you want someone to do that well. And it, it would be helpful to have people committed to doing that part of it at, at a lot of these sprints. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's very helpful. I hadn't, that's something I hadn't considered before for sprints. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Levi. Thanks. Um, so my name is Jess. I'm XJM on Drupal.org. Um, I'm a release manager for Drupal 8 full-time in my job. And for the past month, I'm one of the aforementioned six core committers that they want you to have at every single event. Yay! Um, <laughs> which I'll go to in a second. I actually wanted to address the question about project managers, though, because I think Thank that you. that's the, like, this is the thing that's the biggest unsolved problem for me in terms of our sprints. Um, 
on the one hand, I, like I've had very mixed experiences trying to, to bring project managers into the work that we do in, at Sprints and in Drupal in general. I think Sprints are better, but a lot of times the unpredictable resources and unfixed timelines that we have in open source projects are a big challenge for project managers who are used to managing agile sprints where they control the resources and they can make smart decisions and so forth. Um, and so it's, it's been a struggle, but at, at the very minimum, having someone who will go up to you and say, you know, you know, what is it that you need to solve this and then document that and move it forward. The, the big challenge, though, is that I find that there's a certain minimum level of, of big picture yeah. technical understanding that's necessary in order to distill that information. Yeah, we need a special flower to yeah. do this. Like, like me or Angie. Or like, right. and, and it's but somebody with, somebody with previous experience. Yes. Like, that we don't invite new contributors to these focus sprints. We shouldn't invite new project managers yes. if they're that's new to true. core. Right, it's the same. It's the same thing. We need those roles, but we also need people who have experience already, in whatever project it is, like core or working on contrib, or like an even a, another project that isn't Drupal. Right, like whatever your sprint is about, they need that context. And and I I will also say that, and this prob the the experience part probably helps with that is there needs to be trust between the person who's doing the the project management and the contributors at the sprint and the technical experts. Mm -hmm. um, like there, there, there are times when I will listen to sprinters say what they need, and it's like, actually, no, that's not what you're saying. And they'll they'll try to like hand wave over some technical solution that they want to get done, but actually isn't really a requirement to complete in the project. Um, and so that's uh, it, it, it's really difficult, and it, it, it's something that I feel like. So in 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 my my full time job, um, I I consider myself a developer. I've I've been a programmer for 16 years or whatever but I keep kind of getting pushed into this hmm. role of doing managing things. And it's not, it's not that I trained for it, and it's not that I'm particularly good at it. It's just that you know, it, there's a gap there, and no one else is doing it, and I have the technical expertise and sufficient, like that trust and relationship with the developers who are doing the work that makes it so that I can do a passable job of it, even though it's not, not my strong suit. Yeah. Um, so if anyone has ideas about that, I think I, I really don't know what to do ne for the part, though, is, other than having like hybrid people who have some familiarity with with Drupal 8 core and and ramping them up and then right I, I, so I there's a, so there's a possibility that when we invite people to sprints we make it very clear what role we're inviting them for so it's not necessarily so we could invite somebody with domain knowledge and but say we're asking you to come and fill the role of project, I mean, we shouldn't call it project managing, we should think of something else, but like do the project managing for the thing. So they're clear what we're looking for them to do, and they can decide whether they want to come to the event and do that, or if they're like, man, if I ain't working on code, I ain't coming, right? Like we should be clear with them when we're communicating in advance. Another way of phrasing this is, um, and this is something that I think that, or another way of, another part of this, a person, a role that you can have, that I think Kathy is really, really good about recruiting is, having someone who just does what you ask them, right? Like if you have... Dear God, yes. <laughs> if you have, you know, you're, you're at a sprint and like there's something that's in your way, anything from not having coffee in the room to uh, a communication problem with a developer who's not present at the sprint. Like all of those things are you have to stop what you're doing, take your time away from the specific technical problem that you're trying to solve, um, and then go solve this other non-technical thing. Right. So, like, that's Jared, a way. To Jared Smith is awesome at that. I love Jared. Uh, he's super technical. He can do he's all the things. Um, and uh, but if he's at an event and you need something, you tell him what you need. Like, hey, I need you to rewrite this Docker thing for us right now. He's like, okay. Do, 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 do. You're like, hey, we don't have any coffee. He's like, I got it. Right? Like, he will just. He doesn't care. He doesn't have any kind of ego in his way. He wants the project to move forward, and he'll do whatever you need done. People like that are amazing, right? Like, I need you to uh, write a test for this issue. I need you to write a change notice. I need you to re-architect the whole entire thing. Like, a, you don't need specific people necessarily for that. Like, a person can do... find the person who will do that thing for you. Yeah, so those kinds of people, like, are awesome. <laughs> and, and so I think, I think that when we talk about project management, we're talking more about that enabling part of it as opposed to the the, the um, sort of high level structured planning and and like technical debt management and stuff like that I think I think we're talking more about the the 
like the example of the person who just has the thing that you need and brings it to you. And, and to me, it's kind of magical as a developer. Um, <laughs> but if anyone has more ideas on that, I would, I would, like, I think that it would be really valuable, you know, to invite people who have expertise in this kind of planning to come to events and just sit down, see how we work, and see if, if they have a way that they can help. Because we, a lot of us are developers, and we don't have that expertise, and so we don't really know. Yeah. We've learned kind of by doing what works and what doesn't, but we don't really have a strong feeling for it. I do have, I have a couple other things that I wanted to mention. I've taken a page from Kathy's book, so I, I just took down a couple of other small notes. Um, one was, uh, oh, the gentleman left already, darn. Uh, he asked about estimating how many attendees there are. I just wanted to mention that a good way to estimate how many attendees you'll have is take the number of people who sign up and double it. Um, <laughs> that's usually a safe bet. And it actually, like, bears out in the history of the events we've Are done. you thinking of Ghent? I, I'm thinking of, well, actually, Ghent, we were a little stricter. But in general, like, take the number of people that sign up and double it, and then you have enough bandwidth, but you're not spending overly too much. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Um, and then also uh, someone else had asked a question. I don't see. Was it um, Lima? Um, so someone else had a question about the d two different kinds of splints, sprints. Uh, um, uh, right. uh, I, and I just wanted to like, clar like add to what Kathy said. Like we kind of consider onboarding new contributors a solved problem in the Drupal community. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a lot of work. There's a lot of pain points that we still need to address. There's the, we can always improve it. We can always make it easier for new people to get involved. But like we've we have done so much work over the past four years that we actually like we have a ton of documentation on Drupal.org about this. So if you if you want to do a sprint where you want to bring in new contributors and that's your goal, you want to you know just learn about about whatever project together, whether it's it's a Drupal core project, Drupal contrib, or another open source project. Like we have lots of advice for you. Look at look at Drupal.org. Um, you know, ask in IRC, at ping Kathy. We can give you. We'll we'll shower you with information actually. And, and then the harder part is to say like s absorbing all of it. Right. The other thing about that that you mentioned was that there are some pain points still involved, even though we have solved the problem of how to get new contributors in. And if you're interested in the pain points, Alina and I did a presentation yesterday, and the recording is up, and our speaker notes are up. And that's on the uh, that's on the con site, and it's node uh, 439, in case you want to look at um, some of the ideas that we had for the pain points that are going to be more most effective to address. OK, Jess, and then one, one more. One final thing. Um, I just so as I mentioned, I'm for the past month. I'm one of the six core committers for Drupal Core, and and everyone says all the time, it's really great to have a committer at your event. You have a committer at your event. Uh -huh. I want to kind of walk that back a little bit and say, for you, if you want to do a sprint at your local camp, you do not need a committer to be successful. Whether if you're doing a sprint that's focused on, I want to accomplish these specific goals for this specific project, it's very good to get buy-in from the maintainer from that project. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to do a sprint on core issues. You don't need you don't need a core committer there. Like your your issues will um, get reviewed within a few days. If you're doing something that's on a like a high pressure, highly technical, big investment focus sprint, then in that case it, it makes so like the yeah. So I think like part of the uh, like in like idea for this talk came from me hearing people um, say like, oh, I really want to help Drupal eight get released faster. I should hold a sprint. And I'm like, please don't. <laughs> um, like, you should hold a sprint. It's going to enrich your community. Uh, you're going to find it to be a, a really valuable experience. Um, it, you're going to enjoy it. It's going to be great. But um, if you want to help Drupal 8 get released faster, you're like, I would like to you know, move it up by a month by holding a sprint. Like, then you need to think of some very specific things, the things that we've been talking about. Um, but this applies not just to core, but also um, for contrib. So if you're a maintainer of panels and you want to get a, a stable release out, then you're going to be really focused on scoping your issues and like working on that thing. Uh, and having some advanced communication with a maintainer in panels is going to help. Whether or not they can actually attend your event, I mean, you need to talk to them about it and talk about whether or not it's needed, right? But you want to think about whether or not it's needed, and you want to think about the goal of your sprint. There's a lot of different kinds of sprints, and they all serve a different purpose. Yes? Hi, I'm John Paul McNeil, PZ on Drupal.org, and I have a quick plug and then a question. Sure. Uh, we're having a focused sprint uh, June 5th, 6th, and 7th in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Everyone's welcome to come. and. 
we realize not everyone can get to Portsmouth, New Hampshire, so we are also having a remote option. So I'm wondering if you have any suggestions for, uh, for folks who might not be able to make it physically but still have them feel involved in the sprint. So communicate which issues you want to address during your sprint. Provide some list, a short list. People are overwhelmed if you're just like, we're going to work on a project. Um, make sure that anything that you do in person gets posted back to the issue fairly frequently. Uh, so every couple hours, like this is the new patch, this is the inner diff, this is what I'm working on next, right? So really good communication outside. Have some way to have real-time communication with people who are remote. I highly recommend that you use a public IRC channel for that. You can use Drupal-Contribute if it's a Drupal-related thing. Uh, if that channel gets busy, there are subtopical channels. Uh, so you might have another uh, thing. But do it in public. Don't use like some chat thingy that blah da da da. Uh, use, use IRC for that. Um, please use IRC because uh, it's written. Uh, that lets people uh, whose bandwidth sucks still participate in the conversation. It also lets people follow the conversation on and off while they're working on issues. So they can work, be deep in thought for 20 minutes, snap out of it, check IRC, see what's been going on, and then they can get back down in. If it's an audio Google Hangout kind of thing, that's impossible. Um, uh, so that would be my recommendations for um, getting remote people involved with your local people. And like the daily summaries every day, right? So just lots of communication and narrow, communicate your narrow focus and also have some public real-time uh, typing communication. Thank you. Sure. Okay, thanks. That's it. Thanks for coming. So please uh, evaluate us. Tell, tell us what you thought, whether this was uh, helpful. Oh, or not helpful. And <laughs> yeah, there's a, li there's a link to the presentation from the Node page on the event site. And uh, we can also post uh, like a summary of the notes that we have from the conversation there. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not public. I, um, you can use whatever you want. There'll be pros and cons to it. So if you use Slack, you might get more people uh, like using it um, because they hate IRC and they'd be willing to use Slack where they won't use IRC. But we can't discover that Slack channel, right? If you're using, if you're talking about issues in like panels and you're in the panels IRC channel, People are, the, it's already established that that's the place where people talk. And so if you make a new place, that might work well for the day, but you're missing the opportunity for other people to participate in that conversation. Um, at, a, at a sprint, at a focused event, those people are already committed to being there. They may not like it, but they will install an IRC client if that's what you're using. Yeah, I think it's really it's the standard e in the community. It's not easier. Yeah. It's not easier. <laughs> <laughs> it's what we use. And we don't like to fragment our conversations because then we can't learn from each other. We can't help each other. So we want to have the conversations where the conversations already are. Yeah. So, so I mean, this is also uh, one of my problems. Probably one of the, some of the attendees will not be present, so I was thinking to yeah, make a, something like a remote. Mm -hmm. You know what, we have, um, I'm trying to think, do we, do we have a big remote sprint? We have another kind of sprint which didn't come up today in the conversation, which is um, the global sprint weekend that we do once a year. And those are super nice. Those are great, like that's a great first time sprint to hold if you've never held a sprint before because the whole idea is that you're holding it close to you, so you don't have to travel very far. It's super small, so it's going to be like four to eight people, so you're not like overwhelmed with everything, right? And you're holding it at the same time as 48 other cities in the world. And so um, you can like ask other organizers, you know, like, what are we doing about this? What are we doing about that? Like, it's so keep your eye on January next year 
And, um, and you know, hold a sprint before that. Like, you know, don't let, like, don't be like, oh, Kathy said I couldn't <laughs> hold one until <laughs> January. Uh, don't do that. But keep your eye on January. Um, that's really great. And and just start start super small. I mean, I was, I was, I was just interested in maybe, like, you know, like you mentioned, uh, your global sprint group. Maybe, I mean, instead of, like, a once in a year, maybe you can do it, like, Right. The only the only trouble with doing it more than once a year is I organize it. <laughs> so if you want to organize Global Sprint Day on another day in the year, you like anybody can, but it's a crap ton of work um, because you've got to communicate all these things in advance. Like the same stuff that we were talking about here. Like you've got blog posts to write, documentation pages to update, you know, people to recruit. You you ask them to like you know, make an event, but they don't make an event. So then you have to follow up with them to make an event so that it shows up on Drupal call. Like, having, like, a global sprint day, another one during the year, would be great. You just have to find somebody who has the bandwidth to do all of the logistics our planning our for it. Hmm? Have our dedicated time, full-time. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, if, if you're interested in that or you know somebody who's interested in that, I would love to talk with them about it. Like, I can help them. I can answer any questions that they have. I can point them to resources and, you know, like, enable that to happen because they're really great sprints. They're, like, in the middle of these big Drupal cons, right, or these tiny little things that we were talking about today because they're small, they're kind of focused, but they're super local and you do a lot of like onboarding with new people, like they're great events. I wish we had more people who could take that role on of planning. What's your name? Abney. Abney. 